This is Todd Daniels of the Ezra UC 2025 Conference in San Diego. And today I'm with Scott Bailey. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about, a little bit about why you are here. Yeah, happy to do so. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Scott Bailey, as you said. Um, I'm Chief Business Development Officer for Symmetry US. Uh, Symmetry is um, based in Stockholm, Sweden. And really, our, our focus is on solutions and uh, technology solutions and services for design and engineering, construction, uh, and manufacturing. And um, really, what I like to say, what we do, and I do specifically, is convey the message that we are a, uh, a company that focuses on data. And that's um, our space in the AEC world is, uh, while we're an Autodesk partner and an Esri partner, we really focus on data, and specifically, um, while we're you know here, it's about um, BIM and GIS integration and what we can do with that. So in my role, I um, work with a lot of our partners, Autodesk and Esri and others, and um, really about strategy and alignment, and specifically in the space with Autodesk and Esri, that, that's an, an important space right now. What are we gonna do with BIM and GIS, and where are we going with it? So working alongside them, but also working with some of our key uh, clients, the Craft Group, who on the New England Patriots is one that we work closely with, um, and uh, learning what their needs are, but also developing ideas with them, and then coming back and applying that strategy internally. Now, how do we implement it as a company? Um, there's a lot of um, areas in there that are going to resonate with our AEC audience here, but so we've got a, a place to focus on there. You guys are doing a presentation on, on, the, on the, the craft group, and can yeah. you tell me a little bit about that and, and some of its details? Yeah. Well, side note, I just happen to be a New England Patriots fan. I grew up in the area, so that's total coincidence, but um, uh, we were actually introduced uh, by Esri several years ago, about five years ago. Um, and they specifically needed help with uh, identifying and locating underground utilities. Um, so really, I, I call it, some of our technical people would say, Scott, that's not really what we did, but I like to say we created a subterranean digital twin for them. Um, but really, it's an underground utility map, if you will. Um, and now they have the capability to quickly identify, okay, where is something before we dig, uh, or if we're having a problem, you know, what, what is the, um, what's the quickest route to fixing that problem? Uh, the obvious, you know, uh, advantages of having that underground twin. But through the relationship, what we really started talking about, um, if anybody knows the New England Patriots and the Craft Group, they're a really forward-thinking company. The, the, the Craft Group comes from the manufacturing side um, in the uh, corrugated cardboard world, um, so they are always looking forward to how can we use data and AI and that sort of thing. And that applied in sports and entertainment as well. So really looking at how do they modernize their operations, um, how can we streamline facilities management, and, and um, data monetization opportunities for them. So it's an exciting relationship. Um, like I said, we've been working with them for five years, but really what we're doing today is we're standing up a BIM and GIS foundation. There's way more to it than that, but ultimately we are using uh, like ArcGIS online to help aggregate the data and really make the BIM data come alive with that context. And building out through ArcGIS Hub, we're building out um, uh, a portal, if you will, for stakeholders to be able to see what data do they need to say, see for their day-to-day uh, operations or workloads or initiatives, whatever they're working on. When you're creating these, these, call them these underground models, is that mostly from you know, existing data about where, where the assets are, or is some of it actually taking like new, um, like like GPR scans and things like that to see what's underneath? Yeah, for the most part, it was existing data, compiling that data, but there was verification through other technologies. But um, you know, like most campus owners. Uh, the data can be widespread. It could be, you know, a combination of CAD, and in this case, CAD and PDFs, um, or it could just be literally just rolls of drawings somewhere in a basement or under the stands or something like that. So really, it was compiling all that data, seeing what they had, um, and once we had sourced it, 
uh, understanding what's the good data and then aggregating that data. So it's a, it's a combination of technologies. They had in this case, in, in the case of the underground utilities, they did have a lot of that data in place. So we were able to just harness all that and give it to them in really a format that's a lot more usable. I'd imagine there's going to be a wide variety of um, you know, useful data depending on the project. Some might have you know, ready to go digital data, some might have drawings. Yeah. What are some of the, the, the variant swings on those and, and how can some of those who have you know, older, less digital data prepare for making a, a, a move such as this so that they're better prepared and use, use their time better? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the strategy space, we spent a lot of time talking to owners to better understand what their needs are. And owners, uh, many of them are already very educated, but as we're working together to educate, frankly, each other in a lot of ways, um, they're realizing they need to mandate better data from their AE, AE firms they're working with. So um, really what they can better prepare for is um, better digital project delivery, but understanding that the owner doesn't necessarily need all of the data. That used to be kind of the traditional thinking is get as much data as you can into Civil 3D or BIM or whatever it is for that deliverable. But really um, what I think is important to understand from a deliverable standpoint is that owners are capable of, um, and this is what we're doing with the craft group, connecting data points that are necessary for stakeholders. So utilizing CAD or BIM um, to point to better data and connect to better data is really what we're about and helping them do that. So from an AE standpoint, they could also harness that data. In some cases, that's from building product manufacturers, mapping data to them. So my recommendation is to really engage with those product manufacturers that they work with and they're specifying to better understand what data is important for the owner to actually access. That's really the, the key space that most AE firms should be looking at right now is how do we get better data but not just better data the the, the most usable data i'd imagine that's got a very case to case pretty pretty wild but uh are there some general guidelines of what you found in, in your groups and what is the the better data and what's what's not just yeah um i'm probably not the guy to get the general guidelines but um what we do uh spend time with the owners on is better um, deliverable execution plans. What do they need specifically? We're also developing um, ways to check that the data is the correct data that they need to help the AE firms as well better understand even in conceptual design am I headed in the right direction as to what we need. So probably not the answer you're looking for but I'm not the guy to give that specific answer unfortunately. No, 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 not a problem. So let's say that they do have good data, what might then be the next stumbling blocks that they should be looking toward? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, one of, one of the primary stumbling blocks is always about the people side, right? The process and technology, many times most companies have that in place. But really the stumbling block is the continued um, deliverable, if you will, throughout the project with the owner. So the data can slip throughout the project uh, you know, life, lifetime. So um, that is an area that we really work closely with the ecosystem on how do we continue to deliver the data even through change orders, RFPs, all of these you know, um, hurdles that can happen during a project. And as people kind of change in and out of the project, you might get somebody who's more in that you know, CA phase they have to be a part of engaging in the data and understanding this is what we have to continue to deliver. So it's really educating their entire team that we have to continue to deliver this data. <clears throat> and by the way, the important piece to that really back to them is that, you know, through this digital thread and outcome based design that we're hearing a lot about now, this is going to create that loyalty with that owner because they're going to understand these guys actually do care about us managing our assets and they're going to be able to use that data in the future these engineers for better design and better outcome based design how about some good ways to um, make that education stick to get your point across do you show them previous cases where it's worked well I mean because I know once they see it working for themselves they're like oh this works but how do you convince them to get to that point yeah. based on what, what they can see out there well uh, you know 
of, of course, uh, companies are convinced when they see that their efforts are actually helping um, their profits as well, right? And better data is going to allow them in, in moving forward uh, as we're able to develop more um, error checking techniques, if you will, and outcome based uh, design, they're going to see their profits increase from that. So really, I think the bottom the, the bottom line is going to be the uh, main needle mover that's going to make them want to engage in higher definition data to the owner. Okay, um, you talked about I think the presentation a single source of truth. Now is that you know your definition of, of, of a digital twin, or is that just a, any kind of model that, that you're trying to create for clients? Yeah, um, I would say it's it's really about any kind of model we're trying trying to create for clients, right? Um, single source of, source of truth has become a little bit uh, a little bit like digital twin. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, um, and as we know, especially with blockchain technologies and that sort of things. Um, a single source of truth could also be in multiple locations, right? But really for us, what that's about is knowing that the data, and we know we're never going to get it 100% clean, that's not achievable. But to the best of our ability, we know that these sources and these locations are the most trustworthy pieces of it. And part of our process in working with the crafter group is ongoing management of that data. So, um, and that encompasses not only what comes in, but what goes back out to these design teams that they can work off of to know that this is a trusted source. Okay, so your presentation or the team's presentation is on the, the, the craft group and let's say have large digital models. What maybe of some things that you guys have learned from, from these large projects that you think could translate and be a good advice for people starting on even just small projects? Yeah, um, I, I would say one of the, one of the, biggest lessons learned is I don't think we all realized the value of just sourcing the data and getting it in a structure that's easy to access. Um, that has huge value, not just in sports and entertainment, to any, but to any, I, I would say, uh, campus owner. Um, and that is has been a big hurdle for most um, owner operators is how do I get to that data? So um, that we were able to quickly achieve that, I would say, within the first 30 days, and specifically as it relates to, to the craft group, when they're, um, they have something like an Army-Navy game coming in uh, for the weekend. In the past, that was pretty difficult to go find all that data and get it over to them for the event planning process. Now it's right there, it's at their fingertips, and they can quickly access it. Part two was making sure the data is all trustworthy, but even just that one piece was a huge lesson learned. I don't think any of us, Kraft may disagree, but I don't think any of us realized that they would have that capability that quickly and it would be that helpful to them. So I'd say that's probably one of the biggest lessons learned. I'm thinking about other lessons. I know the, the technical team, because we actually had people on site you know, at Gillette Stadium helping them source this, they're going to know some of the other bigger hurdles. Um, the main piece of it is, is getting stakeholders to understand the value of it. There were some that understood the value, but I can tell you as soon as we aggregated it and really um, aggregated by adding mesh to it, using drone technology and bringing all this technology together, that just that visual was surprising to everybody and then they had that aha moment oh i could use this in so many ways so currently um, we've met with over a dozen stakeholders and i believe we have over 80 use cases of you know this digital twin foundation that we've created could you um a little more specifically describe what sourcing the data is i'm not sure that i'm fully understanding yeah. exactly what that entails and, and looks like yeah you bet so uh, in some cases, and I'll, I would say in the case of the craft group, um, the data could be so widespread, as I mentioned earlier, there's no data, it's just a roll of drawings that we need to figure out which one is the most accurate presentation of it, but also sourcing the data from literally physical locations. It could be there was a scan on a hard drive in the construction office sitting on somebody's desk, which was a real thing. Uh, but also, what other data sources do they have? In this case, it's CAD, it's uh, it, it, or types, uh, formats, CAD, BIM, uh, and in some cases, even PDFs. 
So what, what we were able to do for them and a technology we used is we combined um, modeling uh, specifically in some cases PDFs and CAD into Revit in an automated fashion and then doing gap analysis through 360 cameras. So we sourced the data, but then verifying the data um, through technologies that allowed us to, to you know, look at Autodesk Construction Cloud side by side with this 360 and identify areas that weren't accurate within the stadium. So I went a little off of the sourcing part of it, but it's gathering the data, the different formats that are literally sometimes in different physical locations, and then using other technology to uh, find the gaps and inaccuracies in the data. So I would think that would be very, very difficult in some cases and, and obviously time consuming. Do you need to wait until you have all of that data before you can get started? Is that the best model or, or can you, while you're still trying to figure out where these things are, start working with, with some of the things that you have? What's the best way to do yeah, there? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, in, in, in this sports and entertainment world, which I think um, all campus owners, it's a similar hue, right? Um, they had areas that they needed to prioritize, right? So it could be, um, you know, depending on who we're talking to, it could be, um, you know, football operations, for example. What, what is the most critical pieces that they needed for game day type operations? So we really were able to break it up by that, by sectors. But overall, the stadium, what we have achieved, I think we're 90, 95% of the way there, is getting it to a level of detail of about 200-ish, which is a great base to work from. Um, that's taken a while to get to that point, but now, to your, to your question, we can prioritize the different areas based on stakeholders, their priorities, um, and then really add the, the deeper definition of, if you will, higher definition of data and enrich that data in those areas. And in some cases, that is empowering the um, facilities staff using field maps and building an app for them to go capture that data in the field. Other things that you've learned that maybe you could pass on to our audience of maybe they can, I know again, they likely not going to work on such large projects, but yeah. shortcuts they could take, you know, pitfalls they can avoid, things like that when they're trying to establish a new digital model to yeah. going forward. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, I, I believe that um, it's hard to not get too philosophical here, but as I mentioned earlier, related to the digital thread and um, outcome-based design, AI, 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 everybody's saying it. Um, the more we lean in today to embracing the technology that is gonna allow us to deliver better data, um, that's, gonna, that's gonna provide more streamlined workflows for a for design firms to deliver that data moving forward. And ultimately, there's a lot of fear about AI in the design world, at least the feedback I get is there's a lot of fear. But really embracing it today and getting on board on the data side is going to create, as I mentioned, that loyalty, and it will be streamlining their efforts. Um, and as we know, we've all been working in this world for a long time in technology. We know that, that really leaning in is going to help in that area, and ultimately, Outcome-based design is the future, and you're going to see more and more connected data with BIM and GIS, and they're really, these AE firms that get on board today and understand the value of that are going to be set up for the future, which is fast approaching. I emphasize that we are a connected data company. That's where we focus our efforts. There's a reason for that, because we firmly believe that not only can we connect data just in the AEC space, we can harness data in other spaces as well. And um, that's our passion, that's what we do, and we're excited about that.